We've seen it before. We saw it back in 2016. China turns around, boosts credit, and the EM story changes with it. Why is 2019 different, Professor? Well, I, I think that there's the China story, which is very important. There's also the U.S. interest rate story. Uh, so external factors as a whole uh, are a lot more complicated for EMs in 2019. On the China side, I think the uh, marginal return of doing more and more stimulus, it's getting tougher and tougher for them to deliver. And so China, highly correlated with the M's, is not going to be that engine. Uh, don't forget that on the uh, U.S. side, the rising rates have multiplier effects uh, on spreads uh, of EMs. Uh, so, you know, the, the combined factors, the combined external factors are, are, are not good for, for, for that asset class. Professor, do you think we are at a tipping point for China, though? Are we seeing real diminishing returns for that additional dollar of debt that they push into the system to try and get growth to turn around? Are we at that tipping point? So so to speak. I think the marginal increments are going to get are smaller and smaller. Uh, trade is very important for China. They, they have been an export-led uh, success story. Uh, I think the corporate sector is particularly hurt not just by the levels of debt, but also by the fact that they are overvalued. Uh, so it's getting harder for them. Uh, to push through, certainly in the way that they did so spectacularly uh, in 2009 with their record stimulus. Um, I, I don't think that's there 10 years later. We've had a big adjustment in the FX market to account for the amount of weakness we've seen, relatively speaking, in the Chinese economy, Professor. Do you see more weakness coming through the FX channel for China? Is it something they can control? Because there's this immense faith that the Chinese can engineer some kind of soft landing, keep the currency stable. Can they do all those things at once? So, uh, look, uh, avoiding a hard landing and keeping the, the currency stable are two very different objectives. Uh, one lesson out of the summer of 2015 that I think was a takeaway for the Chinese authorities is that if they get more aggressive trying to depreciate the currency more quickly, the chaos uh, that that can foster can be counterproductive. At the end of the day, uh, in the summer of 2015, a small depreciation a fairly small by EM standards, certainly even by advanced economy standards, triggered such significant depreciations in other currency that at the end of the day, uh, from the vantage point of China, it was counterproductive. So I, I think they can uh, try to smooth the depreciation of, of, of their currency, but at the same time, uh, that may have uh, growth consequences, adverse uh, growth yeah. consequences for them. Well, Professor, we've seen what it's meant for emerging markets this year, together with a stronger dollar, higher rates in the United States and a weaker China. EM has been really, really hit. Earlier this year, around spring, you said there would be problems. I think a lot of people came on this program with me and said a lot of these problems were idiosyncratic. They quickly became systemic and widespread. What do you see happening in 2019? And is there still a little bit of complacency that you can sense? Well, what I definitely, let me start on the complacency part. I do not think uh, the, this market is pricing in at this conjuncture a, a credit event, a sovereign credit event. Uh, I don't think that's priced in. I think they're pricing in, you know, weak performance, more skittishness, more volatility, but not a, not a credit event. So th that, that could always be a negative surprise. Um, in terms of the uh, May 2018 call, uh, look, about 25 years ago, I was writing about the impact of uh, external factors uh, on EMs. And you know, you're talking about countries where uh, both the private and public sector have, in varying degrees, dollar debt. So the coupling of rising US rates and a stronger dollar in and of itself, let alone doubled up with China are, are very significant. That will still be playing out in 2019, especially uh, if uh, Europe uh, is the disproportionate, gets disproportionately uh, hit 
uh, by all the, the trade turmoil. So, Professor, you and I could drown in downside risks on a morning like this morning with the equity market selling off to the extent that it is. You've been through the list of emerging markets that have suffered this year. Argentina has a dollar debt problem. Brazil has a real fundamental debt problem. The story in Turkey is a little bit different. The Turkish story, as you point out, has a corporate debt problem. Who does well in this environment as you look across EM right now? The Okay, so there's the issue of who does well within the EMs, and you have countries that have not increased their external exposure. Their expo they don't rely as much on external borrowing. These are the Perus, these are the Thailands. From the vantage point of an investor, however, that's a real challenge because these are the emerging markets that are not issuing a lot of debt instruments. Uh, so you have you know, a relative scarcity, if you will, uh, of the kind of fixed income where uh, that, that have the comparatively stronger fundamentals. Uh, but you notice also that the idiosyncratic stories that we've heard uh, ha also have been cycling. We went from Argentina to Turkey, yeah. uh, Brazil, and now it's Mexico. So that happens usually when the global situation is also a, a contributor.